Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has used a surprise visit to Washington to thank Americans for their support, calling it crucial in his country's fight against Russia's invasion. In a speech to US lawmakers, Zelensky said no country could be a neutral bystander and that Russia must be defeated. He predicted next year would be a turning point. It's Zelensky's first trip abroad since the start of the war. President Zelensky was given the red carpet treatment as he arrived at the White House, greeted like an old friend by his US counterpart, Joe Biden. They've spoken many times on the phone, but this was their first face-to-face -face meeting since the start of the war in Ukraine, with lots to discuss. In the Oval Office, another show of solidarity and mutual praise from both leaders. We're going to continue to strengthen Ukraine's ability to defend itself, particularly air defense, and that's why we're going to be providing Ukraine with Patriot missile battery. Ukrainian people continue to inspire the world. I mean that sincerely. Not just inspire us, but inspire the world with their courage and how they uh, have chose their resilience and resolve for their future. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Of course, thanks my partisan support, thanks Congress, and, and thanks from our just ordinary people to your ordinary people, Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and the President of Ukraine. This visit is an important one for both presidents. Mr. Zelensky came to Washington with a wish list, with military hardware right at the top. For Joe Biden, it was a chance to send a strong signal to Russia that the U.S. is in it for the long term. The United States is committed to ensuring that the brave Ukrainian people can continue, continue to defend their country against Russian aggressions as long as it takes. Next up for the Ukrainian president, a speech to a rare joint session of the U.S. Congress. Entering the House to a hero's welcome, he delivered a Christmas appeal to the hearts and minds of America. We do not judge and compare whose life is easier. Your well-being is the product of your national security, the result of your struggle for independence and your many victories. We, Ukrainians, will also go through our war of independence and freedom with dignity and success. Volodymyr Zelensky knows support like this in Washington will be vital in the months or years of fighting ahead, but it's not guaranteed. Some Republicans are concerned about the billions being given to Ukraine, and when they take control of the House next year, all could change. All right, let's bring in Ukraine correspondent Emma Chaz now in Kyiv and NATO correspondent Terry Schultz in Brussels. Good morning to you both. Emma, let's start with you if we could. Uh, how have Ukrainians responded to this trip? Uh, well, I think, Anthony, people were first surprised that Volodymyr Zelensky would leave the country because uh, he had said uh, time and again that he would not leave Ukraine unless Russia was defeated. And so far, it's still not the case. But they also very much understand uh, the need for such a visit, the need to uh, for dialogue and direct uh, uh, meeting with uh, the U.S. President Joe Biden because uh, the U.S. has been uh, Ukraine's uh, uh, first and main uh, provider when it comes to financial uh, support. So there's a lot of understanding uh, uh, there uh, for this trip and, of course, a lot of support for their president. To Brussels, Terry, Zelensky chose Washington for his first trip outside Ukraine. How is this being viewed from inside Europe? Well, Anthony, I don't think anyone inside Europe will either feel surprised or slighted at President Zelensky's decision. As Emma mentioned, the United States is the largest donor in real terms of assistance to Ukraine. It's the most powerful ally in NATO. So I think that um, this was a natural choice for, for Zelensky. It makes sense. It also shows that he's keenly aware, as was mentioned earlier, that when the Republicans take over the House in January, there may be a lot of opposition to continuing to fund the 
Ukraine effort at the levels it is now. And, and finally, I think also uh, this was definitely a poke in the eye to Russian President Vladimir Putin, because if, if Zelensky can feel confident enough to leave his country in the middle of war and go that far away, he's a confident man indeed. Back to Kiev, Emma, Zelensky was taking a big security risk uh, coming to Washington. Do we know if he got what he came for? Uh, well, Terry just mentioned uh, uh, how uh, confident Zelensky must have felt to uh, leave the country. I think it was crucial for him uh, to go uh, uh, to go to the U.S. to 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 you know state that Ukraine need needed more support. He said it actually uh, uh, during a press conference. He said, "Of course, uh, we're very grateful for those weapons, but of course, we will also ask uh, for more because we are at war." Uh, so for him, it was very very important to go there. Uh, uh, despite uh, the risk, but we know today. You know, two days ago, we saw him going to Bakhmut. Uh, actually, there's this very strong image of him getting uh, a Ukrainian flag from soldiers in Bakhmut, and this is the same flag that he gifted the United States during his visit. So it's highly uh, symbolic. Did he get uh, what he asked for? Where well, for now, yes, he got the uh, Patriot uh, missile system. He got more funding, but will he ask for more? Of course, because this war is far from being over. And final word from Brussels, Terry. In his address to Congress, Zelensky mentioned the global risk if Putin's army wasn't beaten back in Ukraine. Can he rely on continued military support from other NATO members as well? There is the risk, uh, uh, as we see in the United States, of flagging support with inflation rising, with risks uh, of an energy crisis. Sure, there are those voices in European countries that well, as well that say we cannot continue funding Ukraine at these levels. At the same time, here in Europe, especially in the NATO allies along the border with Russia, the Baltic states and Poland, they remind the rest of NATO and the European Union every single day that if Ukraine doesn't fight and win this war, the war will come to Europe's own territory. So I think that we can count on continued support for Ukraine from European countries. But uh, President Zelensky makes sure to remind uh, NATO and the European Union every single day that this is their war too. Terry, thank you both. DW's Terry Schultz from Brussels and Emma Schaas in Kyiv. Thank you so much. Right, for more analysis, we're joined now by Mikhail Baranowski, he's a security analyst at the German Marshall Fund. Uh, good morning to you. The US is going to deliver the Patriot missile defence system. What difference will this make to Ukraine? Over time, when the Ukrainian crews are trained to use it, it will make a big difference. It will make a big difference in terms of protecting Ukrainian skies from more advanced uh, Russian uh, missiles, including potentially but, uh, including ballistic missiles, if they choose to uh, use them. Um, but it also is, so there is a military dimension to it, but there is also a political dimension. United States, by passing on the Patriot missiles, is giving a, a signal to other NATO allies, including Germany, but also others, saying, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid to send more advanced weapons to Ukraine. Uh, like Patriots, one of the most advanced anti-missile system, but there are also um, tanks and perhaps eventually planes to be delivered in Ukraine as well. So this is a very strong both military and political signal from the United States. A strong signal, uh, no doubt, but is one Patriot battery enough to protect a country the size of Ukraine? Absolutely not. No, it is not. Uh, it is not even enough to protect Kiev. That's why this needs to be a beginning of a new phase of support when it comes to air and missile defense of Ukraine. Uh, Patriots are very advanced, but they are also very expensive and very scarce. Uh, so this is this is not something that will make a decisive military uh, difference. Uh, it will protect part of Ukraine when it is uh, installed and uh, manned. Uh, but it is very importantly the political signal that I mentioned saying to other allies, go ahead, do not be afraid. There is no um, stopping uh, when it comes to support of Ukraine in also very advanced weapons like the Patriot system. Mikhail, just finally, what does the trip like this of Zelensky to Washington tell us? Is it a sign of confidence or, or more a sign of desperation at this point? 
Well, it is this trip is both a big thanks uh, as well as a plead for more support from Ukraine, uh, for Ukraine from United States and other allies. Uh, he is confident to leave, uh, but it's also a very clear message that the United States, with, that without the United States, Ukraine would not be able to survive um, this war, and it has uh, very uh, done very very well. Um, it is also up to the United States and the President of the United States, unfortunately much more than to European allies at this point, to keep Ukraine in the fight. And what Zelensky is asking, don't only keep us in the fight, provide enough systems so we can be victorious. That's why he wished everyone victorious 2023. This was the key message from President Zelensky. Mikhail Baranovsky of the German Marshall Fund, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Well, for more on this, let's bring in Thomas Silberhorn. He's the transatlantic spokesperson for the biggest opposition group in the German parliament, the CDU-CSU. Good morning to you, Mr Silberhorn. Was it right for Volodymyr Zelensky to go to the US and not somewhere in Europe on his first foreign trip since the war began? Well, this was a mighty demonstration of the U.S. leadership. It's just not only a strong messaging for the Ukraine, but for the entire free world. And we as Europeans and Germans should join in now and even set up our own efforts to support Ukraine. As what has come out of that is the U.S. will send one Patriot missile defence system, but Zelensky said he wants more. Should Germany send Patriots too now? Uh, Germany so far decided to send Patriot systems to Poland, but indeed this new announcement of President Biden to send Patriot system directly to the Ukraine should be taken for reconsideration Germany. I am in favor of sending Patriot systems from Germany directly to Ukraine for this decisive, this is a crucial strategic point. Uh, Zelensky said thank you for your support of the United States, but it, more is needed to achieve victory. And Biden responded by the clear announcement that Russia has to be defeated. In Germany, we have discussions over months now whether Russia may not win and Ukraine may not lose, or whether we should go beyond this and say, Russia has to be defeated and the Ukraine has to win this war. I think this is very clear now. We have to be clear on this point in Germany and Europe as well. Any other result would be much, much more difficult, much more expensive, more bloody for everybody in Europe, not only in Ukraine, for many others. And that's why we have to be clear at this strategic political message. The Ukraine must achieve a victory and whoever wants to live in freedom should support as long as it takes uh, the way the Ukraine has to go now. Yeah, so until now, European leaders were, were hesitant to promise Ukraine more advanced weapons. Does this US decision give Europeans the licence to be more generous? Well, at first, uh, the message from the US Congress is that there is a bipartisan support in the United States this strong determination and unity that the United States Congress shows here uh, has also to be achieved in Europe and in Germany. And yes, um, the Ukraine needs not only more, but also more effective weapon systems. Uh, Zelensky himself uh, explicitly mentioned tanks and planes. Uh, now the United States uh, proceed in providing air defense. This is a crucial capability to protect uh, in particular cities and uh, infrastructure in the Ukraine. But in order to regain occupied territory of the Ukraine, this requires, of course, main battle tanks and infantry fighting vehicles. And also air superiority has to be reinstalled of the entire Ukraine step by step. But these questions should be resolved in close coordination with the Rammstein format, which is headed by the United States. And so far, we uh, don't see uh, 
um, specific move of the United States in these questions, but I'm sure that both presidents, Zelensky and Biden, covered all the relevant issues also in this report. Okay, German parliamentarian Thomas Silberhorn from the Conservative Party, CSU. Thank you so much.